Paul Chickadee, Folklore Friday here with myself, Laura O'Brien. And I'm on lauraobrien.ie and the irishpaganschool.com. You can go and check out more like this. So today, every Friday, we look at some folklore from duchas.ie, which is the online repository for the National Folklore Collection. And particularly, we look at the school's collection. So this is where people went around, school kids went around collecting local stories from their neighbourhood, from their family and all that. And they were recorded and now they have been digitised. So definitely go and check out the links below for links to the direct links to the original source material. So what we're going to do is have a look. I'm going to share my screen. And you can see that we are going to start... We're looking at crows and I suppose I wanted to, I found crows and ravens actually because I found two stories, two folk, two folk tales which were very similar. So the first one says, there was once a man who had seven sons and one daughter and when the girl was a baby, the father sent one son to get water to wash the baby. He let the bucket fall into the well. Then the father sent the six brothers after the first son, and when they got back to the well, they tried to get the bucket out, but failed. The father got angry because they did not come back, and he wished them to be turned into seven crows. Immediately he heard the flutter of wings and looked up, and he saw seven crows flying overhead, and he knew that these were his seven sons, and he was very sorry for what he'd done. When the girl grew up, she did not know that she had any brothers until one day she overheard people talking about her brothers and she asked her mother about them. So she was told what happened and she was determined she undertook to go and look for them. So her mother gave her her ring to take with her. She met with many hardships on her way but at last she came to a little house and when she opened the door she saw the table that had seven cups on it. One of the servants told her that seven crows lived in it, in the house. So it's a big house, obviously, with servants in it. And she put the ring into the youngest brother's cup and she hid when they came in. But the brothers found the ring and were delighted for now they could return to regain their human shapes. Now, when I read that story, it seemed to me that there was more to it that wasn't being told, you know. So... I had another dig around and lo and behold, I found, so that one, sorry, was from Kilcullen in County Kildare. And then when I had a little look around, I found another one from Monroe Commons in County Kilkenny. And this one said, a man had seven sons, but not one daughter, although he wished for one. At last, a daughter was born to them. Great joy, but the child was very small and slight and so weak he feared it would die. So the father sent the sons to get water to baptise her, but the sons let the pitcher fall into the well. Then they did not know what to do. They would not go home without the water. As they were not returning, the father said, I wish they would turn into ravens. And the words were scarcely uttered when the children were turned into ravens and they flew over his head. Now he felt very sad as well. And one day the daughter heard some people talking about the misfortune she had caused to her brothers. Then she had no rest or peace till she had made up her mind to leave home and seek her brothers. On leaving, she took nothing with her, only a ring. It doesn't specify in this one that this was her mother's ring. But this is where it gets a little bit more interesting now because she went on till she came to the end of the world. And there was the sun. But it was so very, very hot that she left it and went into the moon. Here it was quite cold and dismal. And she heard a voice say, I small man's flush. Then with fear she left the moon. So she went into the stars and where there was a great welcome for her because her brothers were there. Then they all said, Good grant that our sister is here. Then they became young men again and they returned home with her. Now, while I find these stories absolutely fascinating, unfortunately I don't have um, a deeper meaning to them but I wanted to kind of present it because I want to kind of, I want to throw it open to you so I'm curious if in your own culture there are similar stories and I'd love to know in the comments below if there are and I'm also curious what you think that the deeper meaning I mean there's obviously bigger themes going on here right but when you're looking at old folklore it's kind of hard to tell because it's been passed down and passed down and passed down 
it's kind of hard to tell, you know, extricate exactly where it is. But when you have the sun, the moon and the stars, excuse me, <coughs> I am actually still dying of cold, cough and flu and all the rest of it. I'm choking up. So, um, but I wanted to do this video for you anyway. So excuse my voice might be giving out a little bit. So do let me know in the comments below what you think of those stories and what you think the, the bigger themes might be that are going on there. And I also wanted to have a look as well about a story about a fort. And this is just to kind of show that the crows were specifically associated with the other world because here we have apples and crows. Now, this is about a fort in general. This is from Kilcarabeg. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Kilcarabeg in County Kerry. So. In every fort there is an entrance hole and people often try to go down, but they got a sore hand or a leg or a swollen finger or some machal or other. Now a machal is like a, or a machal, machal I think it would be pronounced. And it's like, um, like an ailment or a, a disfigurement really is what it is. So one day Mrs. Faley's brother was passing firm fort and he heard tic tac and he stood still to listen where it was. And he saw a little man hammering a little shoe. So this kind of starts off with the, I suppose, the traditional leprechaun story, even though they're not called that. Um, so the little man is hammering a little shoe underneath the mushroom. He took off his boots and tiptoed and grasped the fairy by the arm. He demanded his purse of gold. The fairy said that he had no purse and told him to get a spade and then showed him the Gyosodon, uh, Gyosodon actually is like a, it's a thistle, but it's not like a big hard thistle, it's like a soft thistle. So Gyosodon, um, where the gold was. He took the last that the fairy had and went home for a spade. But when he came back again to dig the Gyosodon, the field was covered all over with Gyosodons. He did not know which was the right one. He dug one, two and three, but the fairy kept dancing around and he had to come home. He had that last for years afterward, and it was made of coloured stone. So the last would be a little tool that's being used to help with the shoes. Um, so this is like a, you know, this is a, a memento, if you like, from his encounter with the she or the fairies. So in Firm Fort, then, is another story about it. So Firm Fort is obviously a local place to whoever was telling these stories. So in Firm Fort, there grew a beautiful apple tree, and Mrs. Faley picked some apples as she was passing. So the original was Mrs. Faley's brother, but this is Mrs. Faley herself. She was going on home and she saw all the crows flying around her and she threw an apple at them and they carried it away. She then threw another and then all of them and the crows took them all back again to the fort and then helpfully is included at the end, the crows were the fairies. So this shows the crows as kind of guardian spirits in the other world and that's an interesting one as well. And the apple tree and the apple association is also very much from the mythology of the other world as well. So there is a warning in that, you know, that there's stuff that's going on from the other world crossing over into this world, but it's not for the likes of you or me, or maybe some of us, but um, not for Mrs. Faley anyway. She, she wasn't to have anything to do with it. So thanks very much for your time and your attention. And I'm going to leave it there because, as I said, my voice is giving out excuse the coughing and the spluttering that's going on. But if you want more, do go to the irishpaganschool.com and we have classes on the she there. And we have Morrigan classes and all sorts of interesting stuff about the shapes of Morrigan. And I'm sure you'll find something to your tastes. It's long. <laughs>